To pick up any object, we at least have to give a force which is equal to the weight of the object. For example, if my hand is supposed to pick up this object, I need to give a force which is at least equal to the weight of this bottle. Now, if the force given by my hand is lesser than the weight of this object, then I may not be able to pick it up, isn't it? Now, imagine if the force uh, with which I am actually pushing the object up or pulling the object up is greater than the weight of the object, then this is what is going to happen. It's going to just go up, come back to me because of gravity. Anyhow, let's come back. Now, what we're going to do is I want you to imagine completely replace my hands. And imagine instead of my hand, a magnet at the bottom. Imagine one more magnet at the top instead of the bottom. The bottom magnet's upper portion is of North Pole and the upper magnet's bottom portion is North Pole again. That means I mean to say we have two magnets with light poles towards each other. And what's going to happen? If we go back to a low grade physics, we know that the light poles ripple each other and the unlike poles, that is north and south pole, they are going to attract each other, isn't it? So here we have two light poles that are north and north. What's going to happen? It's going to ripple. But what if, what if in this magnetic setup, we create a system like what we had here, a balanced system? That is, my hand is giving enough amount of force just to carry this object, not to throw it away or pull it down. That is what we're going to talk about now. Now, how can we do that? Let's find it out. Oh. Let's come back. Yeah. So the bottom magnet is rippling. It, uh, both the magnets have a repulsive force between them. If in, in dono ke beech ka repulsive force zyada hai, to upar wala magnet is going to be out of way. If the repulsive force is less, then the above magnet will just pitch it down. Correct? Now, if the force is well balanced, it's equal to the weight of the upper magnet, then the upper magnet will start floating or what we call in physics as levitating. And since we used magnetism here for this levitation, we call this phenomena as magnetic levitation. My name is Abhishek, I am the Master Teacher of Physics at Vedantu. Welcome to Spectrum by Vedantu. And today's topic is going to be magnetic levitation. We're going to talk about the history of magnetic levitation and one of the best applications of magnetic levitation, also called as maglev. The best application of maglev is, by the way, the maglev train. Yes, imagine an entire train running on this process. How amazing is that? That's what we're going to talk about today. So people, hold on till the end of the session. And if in case you enjoy this video, make sure that you hit the like button, share this video and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. So let's get started. The first time the scientific world actually saw magnetic levitation was in the theorems of Earnshaw back in 1839. But it was actually made famous by Emil Bachelet and Robert Goddard uh, in the year 1913 or let's just say 1900s uh, when they actually came up with the idea of actually using magnetic levitation for the purpose of transporting trains. And of course, in the 1900s, it was really crazy to have a coming with an idea of levitating an entire train with the help of magnets. But today, when we look into the maglev trains, it seems entirely possible. And if you go into the process, the process is really simple. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. But also, there are other ap amazing applications of magnetic levitations, like acoustic levitations, aerodynamic levitations. But let's look into the most profitable one, of course, which is the maglev trains. So how do you make an entire train levitate? Okay, that's number one question. Number two is, how do you make it move? Because the magnetic levitating trains, they actually do not have wheels. And how do they move forward? That's two questions which we are going to answer right now. Let's talk about the first part. How do we actually make it levitate? So these magnetic levitation trains, maglev trains, let's call that maglev trains, yeah. So these maglev trains actually have two sets of magnets. And we are not going to use the permanent magnets because a permanent magnet's magnetic field or magnetic strength cannot be changed. That's why it is called as permanent magnets, which is magnetic permanently. Simple as that, with a constant magnetic strength. So we are going to use an electromagnet here 
because in an electromagnet we can actually change the magnetic field or the magnetic strength of the magnet uh, by the passage of current or by changing the current in it. For all those you who do not know what an electromagnet is, let's take it as a device through which when I pass the electricity, it becomes a magnet. So if I pass more electricity, it becomes a stronger magnet. If I pass it a less amount of electricity, it becomes a weaker magnet. Let's say that in a very simple sense, that's what an electromagnet is. Creating magnetism with the help of electricity. Electromagnet. Simple, right? Okay, so what happens is, let's imagine on the train, at the bottom of the train, we are going to put constant set of like pole magnets. Similar to how we actually made the uh, two pieces of magnets levitate. That's what we're going to do. On the upper part, or, or the upper part, the upper magnet is actually the train. So at the bottom of the train, we have similar set of magnets going on. So north, 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 south, 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 south. Of course, the other side of the magnet will be there inside the train or, you know, on the rails, wherever it is, it's going to be there because monopoles cannot exist. So north, 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 and the other set, the bottom magnet, where we're going to put, we're going to put it on the railway track. On the railway track, that bottom magnet is going to be an electromagnet. So we have a series of electromagnets at the bottom track out there, series of series of electromagnets at the bottom of the track. So what the, what happens here is when I pass electricity through this particular track, these electromagnets actually now start creating magnetic field, and I increase the magnetic field of this electromagnets up to a level where now the repulsive force between these electromagnets and the magnet on the train is so much that now the train starts levitating slowly slowly but we do not levitate it to space we just levitate up to 10 millimeter that is one centimeter that's it that's all we do it and that's enough for the train to levitate so now we have actually made the train levitate with the help of magnetic levitation. So the first question is addressed here. Now we're going to talk about what happened to the second question. Sir, how is train ko itne bhari train ko bhi aage kaise badhaoge? Iska bhi jawab magnetic levitation mein hi hai, but kaise? Let's look into that. Chalo, ek choti si chiz imagine karte hain. Maan lo ki aap aise khade hue ho, aur aapko aage se koi khich raha hai. ठीक है आपको आगे से खींचा आप आगे गए और जैसे आप उनके पास पहुंचे उन्होंने आपको और धक्का मारा मुझे पता है मेरे साथ हर्षर यही करते हैं हर्षर मुझे अपने पास खींचते हैं और ऐसे धक्का मार देते हैं जस्ट किडिंग सो व्हाट हैपेंस हियर इज द पुलिंग एंड द पुशिंग आर इन द सेम डायरेक्शन एंड आई गो फॉरवर्ड नाउ पुट द सेम कांसेप्ट बैक इनटू मैग्नेटिक लेविटेशन so what happens is on the side walls of the train, on the side walls of the train, we put a series of magnets. Take it, north south, north south, north south, north south. As a magnet, we put it. On the side walls of the railway track, also we put electromagnets. What do we put? We put electromagnets. The only difference between these electromagnets and the electromagnets at the bottom of the track is through these electromagnets, I'm not passing a constant amount of current. Actually, I'm passing alternating current. Now, if in case you don't know what alternating current is, it's actually a sort of current which alternates with time. That's why alternating means the value keeps on changing, the direction of the current keeps on changing. That's with time. So that's why called as alternating current. Now, how does it affect the magnetic strength or the magnetic field of this particular electromagnets? Simple. When the current reverses, changes, alternates, the magnetic poles also alternate from north. So for imagine if at this position, it's north at one second, at the second second, this will not be north, this will become south. Simple as that. So what happens here is imagine that you are the train. You have south pole on your sides. North, south, north, south, north, south, aise karke side wall mein aapne train mein dal diya. To ye aapka south hai aur saamne railway track aapko north dikha raha hai. Railway, railway ke wall pe jo hai, wo aapko north dikha raha hai. So this south wall has attracted north because unlike poles attract each other. So this south pole gets attracted, attracted, attracted and as soon as the you know, south pole reaches the north pole, it converts to south pole. So what happens? South pole ripples now. South pole ripples. South pole, south pole ripples and I go ahead but this south and this north is attracting. So the bottom also of the train comes towards me and this process continues. 
this process continues. So in a way, the train just keeps on moving forward because of this alternating magnetic field happening. Right? How amazingly a beautiful scientific process converted into the best use possible. How amazing is that? And that is how we make the magnetic le train levitate and also move ahead. Right? So I really hope all of you guys enjoyed this particular session where you understood A to Z of magnetic levitation and also how does a maglev train work. I hope you all understood that. If in case you did, make sure that you hit the like button and share this video, subscribe to the channel as well and let me know in the comments which other invention would you like me to tell you guys in this fun way possible. Let me know in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, this is Abhishek signing off for today. Enjoy your life. Stay home, stay safe and stay strong. Uh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Hmm. Have you thought of how hoverboards work? Is that also through magnetic levitation? Something else. So check it out. Think not, think not. Until next time, people. Peace.